operate in truth, right? Operate in truth. You know, tell the truth. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Huddle Up Gators. I'm here with a friend of mine, Vari Russo, one of the few guys that has seen me play basketball really terribly and also somehow sometimes not be able to miss a shot. So uh, a friend of mine from law school who is big on Gator Twitter, thank you for taking the time. How are you doing today, Vari? Yes, sir. Doing pretty good. And yeah, a uh, flood could come through in, in the clutch occasionally with a corner three, but it had to be a good day. You know, <laughs> well, if the shot yeah. wasn't on, you know, maybe not too much utility and, and flood being on the court. But but nonetheless, every now and then uh, you, you, you'd be you'd be hot. That's for sure. Yeah. As I tell people, sometimes you'd be picking me too high at 10th for the pickup <laughs> game. But then sometimes I'd be worth the ninth pick. You know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, uh, we're here to talk about the Gators and your uh, Gators story. I mean, I knew that you've been a Gator fan for a long time, but I never quite got uh, the behind the scenes on that. So this is going to be a first time for me as well. So if you could, uh, Vari, how did your Gator story begin? Yeah, so um, so I'm from Jacksonville, uh, which is relevant because, you know, we've got quite the large Gator contingent up here. Uh, but I actually, I came up in, in a house divided. So uh, my dad's side, my dad has some affiliation with Florida State and the typical situation. And, and on my mom's side, they were always huge Gators. And I'll get into that in just a minute. But typical situation where everybody's jockeying for a position, you know, when the kids are, you know, four to five or so. But um, and I have some fleeting memories of this moment. But legend has it I was sold. Um, uh, the 96 national championship parade, uh, my grandparents, I'll talk about them in a little bit cause they're, they've got a cool background story with the Gators, but grandparents took me down there. And I do have some fleeting memories of it. I was about four and some change at the time. Um, and, and that's when I was like, all right, this, this is my squad. Uh, but so, uh, the cool thing is, so my grandparents are both Gator grads. Um, my grandfather actually walked on to the team. He was a pretty good football player here locally. Um, and he played, uh, with Spurrier. And so my grandmother, this is actually my grandfather's claim to fame. My grandmother actually dated Steve Spurrier for a brief window of time. Uh, he'll tell you, she'll tell you that she was not the one to tame him, you know, as he is on top of the world, <laughs> one of the largest universities in the South. But, uh, and eventually she, she ended up with my grandfather and, and they got married, but um, they are both diehards for obvious reasons. Like my grandfather was part of that uh, crew that originally got started with the testing of uh, Gatorade and all that. So um they're diehards. My grandmother is actually probably the biggest Gator fan on planet Earth. I mean, she's a good Southern Christian woman, but she may let some words slip on Saturdays when, when things aren't going well for the boys. But um, but yeah, so they, they just kind of indoctrinated me. You know, um, they had season tickets for basically until their backs couldn't hold up anymore um, right there in section two. So I had some great seats uh, through the glory years. And how it went down is I'd always get tickets to those September games when they weren't looking forward to the 95 degree weather and 100 percent, 100 percent humidity. And occasionally grandma wasn't feeling up to go into a game. So I get to ride down with grandpa and, and, and get to I've got to see some big ones over the years. Um, so, you know, it was just uh, and I've always loved football. So it was a natural fire starter right there. So the fandom just took off. Do you remember what your first game was? So I, I'm not, I'm not sure because it, because think I was blessed to be going, you know, from such a young age that I can't really pinpoint it. Um, I, I'm not, I, I really can't tell you. Oh, that, that's fine. Do you know roughly around what, what season? Just curious. Yeah. So it would have been, it would have been late nineties. So we're talking Spurrier, um, the Spurrier years we're talking, I, I don't think I ever, 
I, I don't think I went in the 96 season. Um, so it would have been post Danny Warfel. But um, but yeah, just just a sprinkle of games here or there. And then like re- really where my memories kick in, where I was really kind of understanding what I was in for was um, it was kind of like the leak era and then, and then the, the Tebow era, you know, getting into high school, you know, middle school and high school age, that kind of thing. Awesome. And I've got, got to say, uh, comment coming up during that interesting era where it's first kick in, you're talking about the leak era, of course, that, you know, starts during the Zook years and then uh, mm-hmm. and Tebow, of course, all the success we had and, and with both of them in 2006. Um what would you say uh, during that time frame was probably your favorite uh, favorite game to have watched? Ooh, just kind of. So, you know, I have it, it, it just because it's off the off the top of my head. Um, I had an interesting experience just going down during the national championship season in '08. Um, my family friend of ours is actually a, uh, a Gamecock fan and um, got some tickets to the game. And I guess I wasn't getting grandpa's extra that day. And so I went down with some Gamecock fans for their first ever experience in the swamp to, for that. I think it was like a 56 to six beat down or something like that. <laughs> that was after, after the promise game. Um, one of the, one of the ones soon after that, I recall South Carolina being a formidable opponent, maybe not like a, maybe not like an elite or great opponent at the time, uh, but enough to where like they they walked in the stadium without with at least a shred of confidence, um, and we completely blew the doors off them. And I was just talking uh, to this this guy's father the other day, so that's why it kind of comes to mind, and he was just wowed by the swamp, also, which is always cool when you get like you know we obviously have our own view of the swamp and its reverence and all that good stuff. But when you have somebody else come in there and they're like, wow, it was everything you guys chalked it up to be. Um, so that, that's just kind of, kind of comes off the top of my head uh, as, as one of the, uh, one of the great games from that era. Um, I was always a big Chris league fan uh, growing up because I, I, I was a decent football player, obviously not even in this realm of, of, you know, Gator athletes, but um, but I'm also biracial and it just leaked. That was my guy, you know, because <laughs> I felt like he looked like me and all that, you know, and, and I was a huge fan of his, uh, and I was kind of like one of his defenders as his career progressed and everybody bought into the Tebow hype. Um, so he's, uh, he's always like, you know, he's on my Mount Rushmore of just personal, uh, favorite Gators, but I kind of went off on a tangent there. My bad. Oh no, no, no. You're, you're good. Like, I, I like to meet other people who do have that kind of reverence for Chris Leak. Uh, back during the first bit when I first uh, started the podcast, one of my buddies asked me, uh, he sent in a Q, question for a Q&A, and he goes, who do you think the most underrated Gator is? And then I said Chris Leak, and I immediately the next morning, like he listened to it early and sent me, I knew you were going to say Chris Leak because what I loved about him, you know, was – he came to Gainesville saying his goal was to win a national title. And you know what it, for as much as, you know, the promise and the promise is a big thing in Gator lore, but Mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, Chris Lee making it his goal, you know, saying when he was committing to Florida, he wanted to get his national title. I don't think that gets enough play of a guy who came in and said, here's what I want to do. Played for Sook for two years, completely different type of offense he's not suited for comes in sticks with it probably could have transferred sat a year and played at an offense more suited for him didn't do that and delivered on his goal so Mm -hmm. i mean i just have to shout out you talk about tangent but sometimes the tangents we we learn you know even cooler things and things that i honestly didn't know we had in common so yeah yeah that, that was always my big thing i mean you know, and he wasn't necessarily of elite size and measurables and all of that. He just had uh, the irreplaceable tool of being deadly accurate, um, being a pretty smart quarterback, and just being a team player. I mean, that 
like, especially in hindsight, you know, we look at where things are with college football these days and to even imagine that somebody who's a complete non-scheme fit, you know, who got a new coach who runs an offense and by pretty much everybody's account is pretty much an asshole, you know, and then you got the five star coming through that everybody wants to see play and you still manage to stick it out, you know, through all of that. I mean, that, that's not even that's not even on, on the table in, in 2024. I mean, nobody would no. do that. So um, yeah, he's always been way up there for me. And he's got he's he had some of those attributes that were underappreciated, you know, just quite simply getting into the right play, being able to read defense, you know, and being accurate with the football. You know, that's that, those are the most important things. So no, definitely a big fan, big fan. Yeah. Yep. And um, so going back to some, you know, favorite Gator memories, I know we talked about the trip. You mentioned the trips down with a grandfather to watch or going and seeing that South Carolina game. Um, what would you say probably your favorite Gator memory is? So one on a personal level was, you know, growing up being obsessed with the Gators, you know, it was my dream. Uh, to go to school at UF. Um, and I did not get to that opportunity for undergrad. But when getting in for law school, it, it's I had a kind of a cathartic emotional experience, my first ever game against New Mexico State, I believe it was, <laughs> in 2015, where it was my first ever game as a UF student. And just for whatever reason, you know, it's one of those things I will forever remember, like that feeling, you know, walking in the stadium there, seeing the team run out. Uh, but that's only just on a super personal level. What another, I think, you know, maybe my favorite moment um, may have been the heave to cleave. Uh, if you recall, I don't know if you were in our law school block. Uh, I was little, not. Yeah. So, you should have got with your boy. I hooked it up for University of Florida Law School. We had um, basically our entire last year in school, we had first uh, front row seats uh, for most of the games. So that game is on the top of the list for me because I was sitting there row one and Cleveland ran, ran right by me. I mean, like we all know it's it's one of the staples of the stadium, just how close you are to the actual field. Um and I mean, we're, we're talking about the guys. It felt like he was 15 feet in front of me. And and there's just a fraction of a second where I'm saying in my head, oh, my God, he's open. You know, like he's got to step on that guy. And then, uh, you know, the touchdown, he hits the he hits the touchdown. And then there's a moment where they all run into the end zone. And uh, then Felipe comes through and starts high fiving everybody. And uh, I got to be one of those guys. So I was there row one. So uh, that's that's just probably the most memorable moment because I was right there in the mix in the action. It felt like. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. Definitely one of my favorite memories. One thing that um, I think I was in section 13 for the, for that game. Uh, same with the family. I mm -hmm. won't say on air what my law school, what happened with my law school tickets. Uh, but we'll just say I, I used it, but my brother-in-law, might have uh sat with some friends while i sat with family uh for a few games uh but anyways uh i turned to someone in my group and i i was saying more to get into field goal range because we had blown all of our uh time you know matt mcelwain had we not hit that play would have been crucified for the time management. In fact, funny mm -hmm. enough, before we took the bar the first time, it was on SEC Network, and I watched. I was watching it the night before taking the bar, and I and since then I've never forgotten how bad that time management was. But I mm -hmm. said, throw it up to Cleveland. I meant to get to like the thirty-five so we can take a timeout, maybe try a game-winning field goal, and then mm -hmm. we throw the touchdown to him. And there was a guy in front of me who just turned around and said, you said throw it to Cleveland. I'm like, I didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> I just was thinking this was like a 6'2", six, 6'3", six, receiver, probably could out jump a DB. But yeah, no, uh, so so many fun memories. But I remember uh, speaking of the law school seats, I only went sat on the student side one time. And I have a picture. Uh, it's 
me, you, and some some of the other guys uh, that we played basketball with uh, actually looked at it today as I was trying to find a picture of you and I uh, for the thumbnail. But but I remember that was the UAB, yeah, UAB game. Yeah, and that was also the one then. Yeah, I believe that was also the first year that we had uh, won't back down, and I think that was one of the first times we did it at night because it was after the time change and it was really cool so just just some of the weird things you you think about having these conversations um mm-hmm. but but yeah did you say you had a, another favorite memory or what <laughs> have um, i thrown you off <laughs> well no i was saying that you know that just the the personal experience of first game day in the swamp you know, as a student, yeah. I think that that's always going to be huge to me. And I think a lot of fans have that, you know, individual moment, you know, that's maybe not on the grand scheme of things, something that's going to make the history looks. But, you know, we all have our own little personal uh, moments where we're like, man, this is just incredible. Um, but but no, the other one, that, that the Heave the Cleo, I think that's really just up there. As far as like, you know, being in person in the stadium, you know, taking it all in up front um and thankfully i've been to so many games that it's like it feels like they've all run together uh you know it's hard to parse out the different experiences when you've been to so many um but that 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 one's way up there you know for sure and i know we tried on this but just in case would chris leak be your favorite player or do you have another favorite player so i don't know if he would be number one he's way up there um, I mean, Percy, my dog's named Percy. So <laughs> maybe, maybe that's number one. Um, I always played DB growing up. Uh, so I was a huge fan of, uh, Kiwan Ratliff. I actually also, um, uh, a family friend of, uh, of ours is Fred Weary. Um, he, he played at, at Manor High where I played, uh, played football. So he was always up there because, when I was young and dumb, I had dreams of, you know, uh, being that guy. Uh, so Kiwan Ratliff was way up there. I'd say Percy's probably number one overall. I mean, you know, he touched me like everybody else, just completely yeah. special athlete. For sure. And I know recently, I, well, today as we're recording this, uh, there's a question going around, what if Percy stayed in 2009 and all sorts of fun answers with that on Twitter. Uh, yeah. But I don't know if we should get into that debate here, but is what it is. Uh, So what are some memories that you're hoping to make going forward, whether it's personal, whether it's the team, what are some things that you're hoping to experience as a Gator? I mean, so on a personal level, um, my, my, I got two kids. My oldest is four. So if you're back dating, I was born in 92. So like when I, when I was telling you that my first real, you know, Gator fandom moment was going to the national championship parade, he's right about prime indoctrination time. Um, he, he doesn't know a ton about football, but he knows who we like and who we hate. And he knows we like the Gators and we hate the Bulldogs and we hate the Seminoles. Uh, so I'm already planning this year is going to be the year that I take him to the game, take him to a game. I've taken him to some Jaguar games, which are, you know, as far as tolerable for a, a, a toddler age child, it's much on a lower level than a, than Gator games maybe. So I'm, I'm hoping to take him maybe to like the old Miss game where it's not brutally hot, you know, later in the season, but that's going to be huge. I mean, I may get emotional, quite frankly, uh, bring him and, and letting them see where the Gators play at daddy school. That's what he calls it. Yeah. Um, so that is way up there. Um, and look, I mean, I'm in a position now, thankfully I've been fortunate. I I'm going to be there if the Gators ever make an Addy again. So you're talking about a personal goal. I will, I will do anything to be in person for a national championship if the Gators are, you know, fortunate enough to get back. Uh, so I've said that my, from both my teams, the Gators and the Jags, that, Either one of them gets to the big one, I'm dropping everything. I'm moving trials, firing clients, and quitting jobs. You know, I'll be there. Hey, it, it happens. I, I've definitely felt that way as well. And we'll go 
maybe not together, but together and sense we'll both be there next time. Yeah. Florida plays for a national title. I'll be f- sure to come find you. Okay. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and kick into a few of the, I guess, you could say fun questions, but I also know Hirsch's reaction when I asked him the first one was, quote unquote, oh God, what is your favorite uniform combo? Ooh. So, you know, I like, um, so I, I'm actually a little more partial to our road uniforms. Um, I mean, as far as the home uniform, I just like the classic big game blues, you know, blue top, you know, blue pants, classic Gators, orange Gators grip helmet. I think I I used to be the biggest fan of the all white look. Um, and I think maybe the 2016 Tennessee game scarred that a little bit for me uh, where the duck pulled the truck. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I think I think my number one may just be the the all white road uniforms with the orange helmet. And I think it's just clean, you know, and, and that's just kind of stylistically my preference. The, the, those are, those are my favorites that I think we roll out on a regular basis. I loved that, um, that orange uh, throwback helmet that, uh, that we rocked. I think last year was, was it last year that we debuted the, the throwbacks with the orange, just you F script helmet. Uh two years ago was it two years ago three years ago because we haven't done a throwback with napier yet it was vandy 2021 i was like hold on it was vandy because i have that yeah but the i mean the that's way up there for me as far as the throwbacks are concerned um and then just those uh uh shoot the the white uh the white throwback helmet the white blue white combo um, with the throwback that we wore versus Auburn is just beautiful. Yes. And so, you know, it, that, that I just gave you like four different uniform combos. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the orange helmet, all white um, road look. Just think it looks clean. Okay. And one, one more of these little, I guess, again, fun questions. Um, if you could go to one away game, uh, and watch the Gators, or maybe it's just a stadium you want to check out. What would it be? So I have yet to make Death Valley. Um, I've got like a bucket list. Uh, I want to go to. I want to see the bucket list item for me is to see the Gators play in every SEC stadium. And that was going to be the traditional stadiums, but I guess now we've got to add Oklahoma and Texas to the list. Um, so I'm disappointed in myself that I've been to others and haven't made it to. Freaking Death Valley, uh, because I want to compare it. You know, I want to try to be sober enough to where I can be objective to see if the noise level is any different than than the swamp, since that's probably our number one, uh, our top competition for uh, stadium noise. So that would probably be number one. Though I, I've also always, and I was really disappointed because I was planning on doing this uh, during COVID, but um, I've heard a lot of great things about the growth um, and all this. Yeah. So I'd love to I'd love to take a trip out there to do some tailgating at the Grove. Next year, let's do it. Down because as long as these these kids let me go. Uh, take them. That's they'll good. be fine running through the fields for a few hours by themselves. <laughs> kids are in, are intuitive. They'll be fine. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. But uh, yeah, I'll say this: it was disappointing. Twenty twenty going to. Uh, Ole Miss and not seeing the Grove, although having mm-hmm. an entire section of football stadium to yourself, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and one of the crazy things that I've done in life, but mm. is is what it is. But definitely, uh, I want to check out the Grove and next year we get the chance. So maybe we'll hook up in Oxford for sure. Uh, Sounds good. I'm down for that. Yep. And all righty. Um, do you, uh, I guess, where can people find Javari if they want to check out your thoughts on, uh, on the Gators or anything in general? Well, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Um, my at is at one five seven Gale. And for the Gator fans, they may be able to decipher, um, what that means, the significance of that at, 
Uh, but that's that's my Twitter handle. Or I guess it's X. My bad. Um, I'm stuck in I'm stuck in like 2022. Uh, but you can find me there. I mean, and I, I talk ball all the time. I talk a lot about the Jags too. So uh, bear with me for for those who don't care about NFL football. But um, I try to keep it positive <laughs> because at the end of the day, I keep the intrusive negative thoughts in my head. Because what am I really? Um, you no, know, do we do we really want to whine about? You know the things that are going bad that we're all thinking all the time, anyways. No, so let's let's try to at least uh, focus on the positive, though. Though I'll be objective about it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat. You know, call a spade a spade. You got to do it from time to time. Definitely, and we've had uh, different guests have come on, plug different things. Do you have anything uh, you want to plug before we get out of here? You know, um, I, I do a little work in, in the community up here in Jacksonville. Um, if you're interested in the performing arts, um, I am the president of the board of directors for a local theater up here called Theater Jacksonville. Um, we have the 105th season that's debuting. We're one of the largest, uh, longest running community theaters in the United States. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, you know, I didn't. I would not necessarily peg myself as a quote unquote theater guy, but since I've been involved, um, I've come to enjoy the medium of entertainment. It's just something a little different. You know, we sit in front of screens all day and uh, watch TV and, and movies. Well, believe it or not, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive to get up there and see a bunch of uh, folks acting live. It's um, a heck of a talent. So that would be my plug, you know, just trying to get, get back to the community. And, and I'm big about that up here in Jacksonville. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, any last thoughts before we get out of here? Anything you want to say about the Gators or your experiences? Well, let me see. You didn't ask me what my who I hate the most, and it's THWG, to hell with Georgia. Um, <laughs> yes. Again, that, that comes from the Jacksonville roots. You got to deal with those people barking at you for a week straight up here in Duval County, and uh, they are a complete pain. You know, there are more knolls around. Uh, but for whatever reason, they're a lot less aggravating uh, than, than the dogs when they come up uh, for their weekend and they get to go party and on St. Simon's Island in Georgia and get all lathered up and try to tear my city down. So um, it's THWG. That's that's what I got for you. Yeah, that's what my uncle in Jacksonville definitely would say. And he grew up in the area before Spurrier helped tamper it down a little bit. So he would yeah. tell me all about growing up seventies and eighties in Jacksonville for sure. And they had a lot worse then. That was when they had Herschel Walker running, like running, running all over us. And yeah, you know, at least I came up in the spur of years where, you know, we, we expected a W. Yep. And definitely a whole different feeling. Like my feelings in, on Georgia have changed a lot from only seeing them beat us three times and, 21, 22 seasons to uh, now where we can't see it, seem to be them too much, but that'll change then. I, one way or another. Yeah, uh, it'll change eventually for sure. Yep. All righty. And I guess uh, with that said, thank you for joining uh, Vari. It's been a pleasure. And for everyone listening, thank you for listening. And as always, go Gators. Uh-huh.